And welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally and internationally known as The Money Lady. 36 years of handling all facets and phases of money, and I am committed to you as my faithful, loyal, devoted viewers, to empowering you in the area of information knowledge. And today I have an exceptional program with two absolutely over-the-top guests. So just sit down and get out a pen and paper and learn some things. I am going to be interviewing for the next hour the executive director of DATV, which is where my show is produced from, and the um, executive producer of this, um, this organization as well. Two amazing people to talk about the history of DATV spanning 35 years. Can you believe that? And the, um, we're going to be talking about the woman who made her vision a reality. You know I'm always concerned about vision. And it takes someone who has a vision for greatness to bring that into fruition. So we're going to be devoting this next hour to talking about DATV, uh, what has made it one of the top uh, public access uh, channels in the United States and um, getting their insight and um, learning some things. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my two guests and we're going to get right on into the show. Thank you for viewing in. And how are you today? Fine. Good. Would you introduce yourself to our viewers? I am Steve Ross. I'm the executive director at DATV. Okay. And? I'm Michelle. I'm Melissa Mills. Constantine and I am the program director. Correct. I do apologize because I did not use your title correctly. Where do we want to begin about this phenomenal station? I would say we begin at the beginning. Okay, okay well let's begin. Well, as you mentioned, DATV is 35 years old this year, 2013. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yes, and uh, we were created from a vision from uh, DATV Access 30 Dayton's first executive director, Roxy Cole who felt the importance of giving the community the opportunity to voice their opinion on mm -hmm. different topics that traditionally has always been held by commercial and uh, corporate entities. So as a result, she along with a group of volunteer board members at the time, and they were made up of um, folks from the community, folks from uh, the city of Dayton, former Mayor McGee, former Commissioner uh, Richard Zimmer, Leela Estes, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Schaefer, and some other folks to create DATV as a sounding board, an electronic soapbox, if you would, for the community. And that started in 1978. So um, Roxy Cole was really the uh, front runner in this entire region in community access television, and is still known today, even though she passed away some 20 years ago, as uh, one of the true innovators of community television, public access television in the country. That is absolutely amazing. And Roxy, actually Roxy Cole hired myself, Melissa, our marketing director, Dan Suffoletto. We've all been here for a long time. She hired you herself. She hired us, yes. My goodness. And did you see her vision when you were hired? Did you get her well, vision? Well, I'll put it to you this way, yeah. because I came for broadcast television. Okay. As well as Dan Suffoletto. And honestly, it took me a couple years to really get on board. I mean, mm -hmm. she would pound it into you. And I'll tell you, after, after you get it, after you understand what we're here for and the importance of what we do in the community, um, yeah, you absolutely share her vision. And, and I thank her for that. What do you do that is so unique and distinct from commercial broadcasting? Well, once again, you know, we are the electronic soapbox in the community. Mm -hmm you can't go to the other TV stations necessarily and say, put me on television, I have something to say. 
You're absolutely right. I, I am Joe Public, <laughs> Mary Public, and, and this is what we are. This is what we're here for. We are here 100% for the community's consumption. So they come in, they pay, if you're 18, if you're over 18, you pay a $50 a year membership. Nominal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? You, you get thousands mm -hmm. of dollars worth of training, worth of equipment, worth of airtime after that. Mm -hmm. So we will teach you how to make your own show using our equipment. Melissa takes a great deal of time uh, putting those programs on the air, putting them in the right slots, not only the right slots, but in uh, air times that are mutual, mutually agreeable to both you and the station. So we'll work with you. And then your show gets put on the channel. And this is a freedom of speech based organization. Um, obviously we fall within certain guidelines, but you know, we are a freedom of speech based organization. We're here for you. And that's what community television is, giving people in the community the opportunity to basically say what's on their mind and getting that to the masses. Well, let's talk about your relationship with Roxy because when I came here, we had a, a personal conversation about uh, your uh, mentor and her impact on your life. So let's talk about Melissa mm -hmm. and exactly what that experience was like with this amazing woman. Mm -hmm. I feel her in here. I told you that before. I d I've never met her, but I feel her presence. She is here. I felt her on Saturday when I was doing a show in here on Saturday, and the, the studio is named after her. Okay. Um, the Roxy Cole Studio. So. I walked in the doors as a teenager um, helping uh, out during a summer school program mm -hmm. that my high school um, had and uh, they sent me to Access Dayton and at the time I didn't know what it was um, and I walked in and found out that it was a TV station and I still didn't know what type of TV station but I found out it was community based and people came in, learned how to uh, uh, operate cameras and they took the workshops and started producing their own program mm -hmm. and so I answered phones for the summer of 85, 84 um, 1984 1984 mm. so I was That's amazing. 15 <laughs> I'm giving my age here <laughs> and she uh, she trained me how to answer the phones I picked up the phone and said hello uh -huh. and Roxy said now Melissa my friend um, this isn't how you answer a business phone and so she taught me and uh, taught me how to <laughs> do that and so throughout the summer I, I helped in the office and then I started going through the workshops and volunteered um, through high school and um, in 89 before she retired I came back and then uh, they uh, hired me before she retired um, the summer of 89 and so I've been working with Steve and Dan since 1989 and My. she um, Goodness. Yeah, and so I, you know, she she is a mentor to me because she taught me what um, our station's all about, and I am able to, through her, tell our new members coming in, telling our current members, you know, that community TV in your community and let your voice be heard is the most important thing that you can do. So she has been, she's always been the rock. And mm -hmm. Steve as, as a mentor as well, because he okay. has taught me many things um, over the years. And I've been truly, truly blessed from um, coming in here as, you know, snotty 15-year-old. That um, is so. But what, yeah. a, what a great start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was an what amazing woman. What a great woman. start. Yeah. I mean, I, mm -hmm. So, Steve, where do you see this? And I know we talk about freedom of speak, speech, and I'm sure that there are some commercial uh, television networks that would challenge that uh, statement and they would argue that we offer freedom of speech as well. Some of your more um, um, open-minded, I guess, television venues, uh, network stations. So as we are looking at today's environment where freedom of speech also includes profanity on commercial television, um, mm -hmm. a little bit of everything going on anymore. Uh, what, where, where is the line drawn between what you do and what they do? Well, let me put it to you this way. I mean, you're right. When you watch a lot of, well, just anything. <laughs> yes. um, I was trying to remember of a show I was watching last night where they were dropping some questionable words. But it's not, a, it, you know, it's not really about that. What it's, what it's really about is the community having a place to come in and once again share their ideas with the community. 
And I'll give you an example of, you know, you were talking about freedom of speech and some of the language that might go along with it. Yes. You can tell when people are being sincere in their presentation mm -hmm. and when they're not being sincere. Mm -hmm. I agree. I haven't had a producer, and I won't mention the, the producer's name or the program, but he said, take a look at this. And he interviewed uh, somebody from one part of the town, and I don't remember what the question was, but mm -hmm. what do you think, the question was, what do you think about what just happened? Well, the person was very colorful in their language. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he goes, do you want me to bleep that out? And I said, absolutely not. Because what you're doing, if you do that, mm -hmm. you're infringing on his freedom of speech. To say. Mm -hmm. Because this person was not, saying these things to try to push somebody's button and for the shock and all value. Mm -hmm. This person was expressing themselves the way they express themselves. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was very powerful. And so I made the comment, well, if you bleep that out, I'll air it once and then I'll pull it because you're infringing on that person's freedom of speech. My goodness. Because that's very, that's very important because this person, like I said, was, was there presenting their thoughts on the matter mm -hmm. in the most passionate way that they could in the way that they speak. Mm -hmm. That to me is very powerful and that's very important. So you I don't want to shut those mm -hmm. people down. Okay. You know, on the other hand, we've had people who would get on, and it's, it was a long time ago, they would get on the channel and they would just throw a few colorful words mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And even though we will not censor that, we'll allow it to air its one time and we'll put it on at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. I did speak to that person and I said, is this what your show's really about? And they start, right. because I said, your show really has a good message other than that. So they thought about it and they go, well, you know, you're right, it's not. So you, can, you, you get to a point in your career here where you can tell where people are trying to push the button and where other people are being very sincere. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is that, you know, we are open to the public. This is the public's TV station, the community's TV station. It's not here for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to operate, to, to, to help make sure it runs smoothly. Mm -hmm. Melissa is the same, mm -hmm. the same thing in the duties that she performs. But this is the community station. This is a very powerful place, and, and there's a lot of passion, a lot of important things that go on here. Because the community has a lot of important things to say. And this is where you can say it, and this is where you can reach thousands and thousands of people. Yes, you're right. So do you feel that the message that the community, quote community, is uh, trying to get out today has been um, muddied, perhaps, as more and more people are using other venues to convey their thoughts and impressions on, on various subject matter? No, no, I mean, it, you know, it, that's always gonna come from that individual user. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how much um, they wanna put into their message. Um, if you're talking about people who use YouTube and, and yeah. Lip TV and mm -hmm. Facebook, to me, you know, those are very important additions to what we do. Right. You know, that's mm -hmm. just one of the tools in the toolbox. Okay. You know, I see this, what we do is the toolbox and those other things as tools in the toolbox. Those are very important. And it does not, um, I don't think, water down the importance of what goes on here because people still watch television. Mm -hmm. You yes, flip around, do. you flip yes, through. Well, you know, you can't necessarily flip through YouTube unless you know what you want. Right. A lot of times as viewers, we don't know what we want to watch. You're right. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. I'm we a flipper. Click. I click, uh -huh. click, click. Oh, well, this is interesting. What is this? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of great programs that go on here. These are people, and I'll tell you what, the people who do shows in here, just like the people who are producing this show. Yes. They're volunteers, you're a volunteer. Yeah. The crew in the back, mm -hmm. they're volunteers. They're very passionate about what they do. And we are so blessed to have the volunteers, the members in this organization, in this city, you know, that mm -hmm. they may not have somewhere else. I mean, I hear stories and it's <laughs> like, well, really, we have a great volunteer group mm -hmm. and we rely on them. If it's not for the members, we don't exist. What would your sure. thoughts be? It's very true. Uh, when um, someone walks through the doors and goes to our workshops, you know, they're nervous. And then we don't, we, uh, we take them under our wing and show them the ropes and, and love them. You mm -hmm. know, they're, we open up our arms like we're family. And we, uh, you know, Ben and Ron, who's uh, in the control room right now, they're family to us. And that's how we feel with uh, people walking in the door. And, um, we just make them feel at home. We, you know, some people are uh, a little 
scared to operate a camera or do the editing and mm -hmm. you know so we help them take baby steps and some members will come in and they pick it up you know and they don't need any uh, you know a babysitter with them so we take time with those that needs it and um, you know, our oldest volunteer is what 92 years old um, Ninety yes. and it drives from Yellow Springs mm -hmm. my goodness yeah. gracious yeah. 92 years yes. old uh -huh. That's impressive. I have a story about that gentleman. Well, tell me. Um, won't mention his name, but he's 92 years old, black gentleman. The reason I say that is he's a Tuskegee Airman. Oh, my goodness. That's former, even more impressive. Former yes. Chicago police officer. Okay. Hard as not nails. Mm -hmm. You know, real rough gentleman who's seen uh -huh. a lot of tough times in his life. Yes, yes. I get a page to come back to the control room because they need help. And I knew what the show was. It was Harper's Bizarro World. Very po popular mm -hmm. show here. Extremely Very. popular. Matter of fact, that gentleman, uh, he, put, he takes his show and sends it all over the country. Okay. Very popular okay. show. Okay. Um, but I go back there, and who do I see directing this show but the 92-year-old man helping out a, a gentleman who, you know, lip syncs to songs and may not be his cup of tea mm -hmm. and I'm going and I'm seeing two opposite ends of the spectrum here mm -hmm. and it's because of the and I think it's the environment or what this building brings it's oh, people it's who not. from opposite ends of the world of life want to help each other yes and so there's this 92 year old man directing this show um, for this other other gentleman and maybe they do or maybe they don't ha uh, share the same ideas but we see that constantly mm -hmm. where people from totally different mm -hmm. points of view help each other out because they need help yeah. and I think that's the most amazing thing here mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a utopian society and I know that sounds very you know actually it doesn't it, it, but mm -hmm. I've seen it so many times mm -hmm. here just people come together and they want to help people out on a, on yeah. a project and in, they made it a successful show it's a very success, successful show well that's how I wound up here um, Ben Artis wanted to help me and he did and he has been so gracious and so kind mm -hmm. period and Melissa wanted to help me and she has been so incredibly gracious patient because I'm a type A personality so it can get a bit bizarre mm -hmm. but she's always been on point professional and then Ron, Ron same thing always and then the other volunteers and I, I, I have fallen in love with this place it's it's just odd mm -hmm. because I've been on television on venues since 1976 commercial and you do not have that same spirit that is present in this mm -hmm. relationship it, it, it is powerful well you can't help but get very close to the folks that come yes, in here because yes. they're so friendly mm -hmm. and as long as you treat them with the, the same respect and dignity that mm -hmm. you want to be treated mm -hmm. with all of a sudden now your family you've got your mm -hmm. arm around them how's it going today you are doing all right mm -hmm. and it, it, I just think it's a lot of fun to me that's mm -hmm. I don't like sitting in my office the most fun is when I interact with the volunteers the members right and mm -hmm. I call everybody a volunteer because they're volunteering their time to either produce mm -hmm. their own show mm -hmm. or helping somebody else um, and then we do have people who are members who really don't even come into the building. They just like what goes on here. Mm -hmm. And one important thing about how to find out to get on, get involved, what yeah, goes on with yeah. ATV is um, we have an orientation held the second Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Okay, let me say that closely. Mm -hmm. The second viewers is the second Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. here at yes. the station. Mm -hmm. That's free. That's free. How much is it's, the, it's, it's free, but what's the address? Um, 280 Leo Street is where our studio is located at. And our volunteer coordinator, Del Grow, will go over all of the workshops that we offer, um, the volunteer program mm -hmm. that we have. He will give a tour of the studio and then uh, let you know when the next set of workshops are, depending on if you want to volunteer or if you want to become an independent producer. There's a different series of workshops that you will take. Um, and to use our equipment to go out on location, you know, the, um, there's field production and um, you'll take a couple of those classes and then you'll be able to take our state-of-the-art cameras that we have um, and go out and shoot your program, come back and we'll go through the edit workshops with you. And that's how you come and get involved. Some folks are just wanting to produce their own TV show uh -huh. uh, they don't want to volunteer, which is fine. 
Um, and, but a lot of people, once they come in and mm -hmm. they see what's going on here, they will, uh, you know, volunteer. Another um, thing was our, you know, we have two channels. DATV Channel 5 is okay. our public access channel. Okay, and that's available to who? That is available to the city of Dayton, uh, okay. Riverside, and Butler Township. Okay. Um, um, Time Warner. Mm -hmm. Time Through Time Warner. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can they get it on the little rabbit box? Because if they're no. not a part, okay, so you have to be under the mm -hmm. Time Warner. Yeah. System, direct TV system, or just, just strictly um, Time Warner? Time Warner for Time now. Warner. Okay. And it's interesting you speak of direct TV. Unfortunately, we're not on the satellite, but I had a viewer call me mm -hmm. yesterday, and uh, for financial reasons, they uh, dropped Time Warner mm -hmm. and went with Dish TV. And she was an avid viewer of a couple of our uh, late night movie nights Saturday Night Fright, Sp uh, Fright, and then Shock Theater and Pirate TV. Um, and she sounded like she was, I mean, in her 70s, but mm -hmm. she loved these movies from back in the day that we right. air on Friday and Saturday nights. And she went on for about 10 minutes, highly upset that, that she's not going to be able to see our channel anymore. Right. Um, and she was getting the internet, so I said, well, once you get the internet, um, you know, call me and I can kind of explain to you how you can go on our website at www.datv.org and click on our uh, streaming and you'll be able to see our channel streaming live um, on, uh, you know, on the website. So she, uh, she said she hopefully, hopefully was going to get the, uh, the internet, and mm -hmm. so she'll be able to watch, you know, our channel. That live streaming is mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Isn't that available yes. nationally, internationally? Mm -hmm. Worldwide. Worldwide. Real time. And then we also have a second channel. Yes. Okay. Our, our second channel is Dayton Spiritual uh, Television. Um, about 17 years ago. Um, our, uh, we were granted a second channel and, uh, you know, we talked about what we were going to use it for mm -hmm. and our, um, our churches and our community, um, wanted to be on TV, wanted to have their sermon on. Yes. And we had 25, 30 churches weekly coming in at that time. Oh my goodness. But they, you know, we're trying to give fair, um, an equal time to everyone. Yes. Um, and we decided that let's try and put the spiritual uh, programming on this channel. Okay. So now, all these years later, we have- They have their own channel. They have their own channel. Mm. Um, okay. um, a church uh, in our community uh, will have two air dates. So it w the program will air one or air twice. Mm -hmm. And we have over 75 weekly church services. All 75. Now think about how busy she is just uh, with that. I, I can't, I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how yeah. she does it. I don't That's know amazing. how she does it. It's very, 70. when she goes on vacation, it's not very fun. <laughs> exactly. I was I'm the one doing say, it. So. I, I, I was going to say there are some things that happen when you are But you know, we're, we're so blessed to have mm -hmm. everybody producing shows here. You know, yeah. the religious folks really are the most prolific, prolific producers, I would say, just because they have a, a, everything to shoot every week. So now, do mm -hmm. they do on-site or do they come into the studio? More on-site yeah. than in the studio. Okay. Um, uh, but they go out to their church every Sunday. Um, they come with in. With the equipment? With or? our equipment, or a lot of our, um, our churches now are buying their own equipment. Really? We're recommending what, you know, they should buy or where to go and get the best cameras, lights, or whatever. So all they have to do is come in and bring us the program. Um, and with technology now, um, you don't even have to come in anymore. Uh, you can we, send it in? You can send it in through our FTP site. Oh which which I don't like. I, I was the one okay. that set that up. <laughs> Sorry, I hit my mic. Uh -huh. I was the one that set that up, uh, but I don't like it because then you lose sort of contact. Well, right, because you know? then it yeah. becomes a blip in the... You know, you lose yeah. contact with the people that you've yeah. really grown right. close yeah. to. But they're able to take advantage of technology if they want to. And, and let's, right. you know, let's talk about some of the shows as an example. Okay. Um, you know, we have a lot of popular shows, but, you know, they range from a, a real grandiose production, mm -hmm. like the Rob Dennis show, which yes. is more like a Tonight Show, it and there's a band yes. and everything. Uh -huh. He puts a ton of time in that show. Yes. Mm -hmm. To um, another show, which is not alternative perspective, but uh, anyway, it's a guy with a camera. Mm -hmm. And it's just him telling people his viewpoints. That's hmm. pu that's public access. That's mm -hmm. community television. Set a camera up in front of you and tell everybody what's on your mind. That's Amazing. what it's all about. It's so simple because you hear technology, and some people are, are scared and turned mm -hmm. off, as Melissa said, about technology. But it is literally as easy as setting up a camera, 
hooking up a mic and saying, okay, Dayton, here's what's on my mind. Mm -hmm. My word. Turn it into Melissa. And you're on. And you're on. Mm -hmm. Do you get feedback from those types of venues? We do. Um, you know, there's some programming that uh, may be controversial uh -huh. and a viewer is watching and they will call in to complain. Mm -hmm. I explain to them, you know, what we are. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what this person is doing, and mm -hmm. that he had you know, it's a First Amendment, right? And that you know we offer them to come in and get onto their soapbox for five to ten minutes to speak against the program. The majority of the viewers are just going to call and complain and mm -hmm. you know, say it's not right. And um, after you educate them, you know they just want to basically complain, and then they'll just hang up and won't call call again. Okay. Um, but it's not. We haven't had that many, you know, phone calls that are, you know, controversial. Um, but we just tell them, we educate them and say, hey, come in and, uh, and get involved. It's a great opportunity for us. And I'll tell you, those calls are very important to mm -hmm. us. I would think we so. We want to hear what people in the community think. Um, number one, number two, like Melissa says, it gives us an opportunity to educate them about mm -hmm. community television, public access. Um, the one thing you hear, you'll hear us do, we bounce around from public access to community television. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that we're trying to say community television because I think it's a more fair representation of what we do here. Yeah. And when people hear public, they get us confused with PBS. Yes. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not, it's not PBS. They are very important to the community, but they do to something totally separate mm -hmm. than we do. Mm -hmm. So. I believe that this may be a good time to play um, the video of Roxy mm. Cole talking about community and what uh, you know community access means to our community. Okay, so. well let's see if we can mm -hmm. uh, get the guys in the uh, control room to put up that video so we can listen to her. Can we get that going? Here we go. Yeah. Roxy Cole, the founder of DATV. Hi, I'm Roxy Cole. I'm the executive director of Access Dayton, and I'm about to do my least popular thing, and that is talking to a lens. Why am I involved? Why do I keep doing this? The concept of public access was tremendously exciting to me. The very fact that a cable company, with the approval of the city, would give the community a voice that you did not have to be a community leader in order to have access to the media. That was and is tremendously exciting because it seemed to me that what I was hearing was everybody had a First Amendment right except you and me. Um, cable companies have First Amendment rights. Um, leaders have First Amendment rights. But you and I, I hadn't heard too much about. And so it began to take on a, a total new meaning. Also, in our town, both newspapers, morning and evening newspaper, is owned by the same person or the same company. That company also owns a radio station and they also um, have interest in a local television station. Also, on a national level, because uh, they're saying five cable companies are going to end up uh, having control of what comes into to our homes. Uh, that concerns me a great deal. I heard one of the attorneys for a cable company make the statement that if the community needed information uh, that they weren't getting through the newspaper or, or television, that they, the cable company, would give it to them. Well, that doesn't do too much for me. I think that's, um, that takes away a lot of my right and my freedom. Um, you're right and you're free. And I think you have a right to voice your opinion and you need a place to be able to do that. And you shouldn't have to be John D. Rockefeller in order to do that. People have a right to voice their opinion. People have a right to have access to this medium. Uh, medium. And um, I want to make sure that that happens. I want to make sure that uh, our voice is heard. Or that at least we have the opportunity to voice our opinion. And I think public access is going to take on more importance. I don't know so much that I believe or that I'm so committed in uh, our tapes going to the West Coast or North or South or any place like that. 
I think the information from the east side of our town to the west side of our town, to the north of our town and south of our town, I think that's important. I think our community can use public access to become more informed. I think they can learn that we all share some, some of the same concerns and we can all learn what each other's problems are. And we can also learn what each other's solutions are. And that's what I think public access is all about. It's, it's a, it should be to help communicate and to make our community smaller and closer and solve problems. So, that's it. Wow. You could end the show. I, I, I don't think we can I don't, say it any I don't better think, than that. I don't think you can say it any better than the, the visionary herself. So you asked me at the beginning, you know, you know, how long did it take for me to catch on? Well, you know what? You had it pounded into you. And as soon as it hit you, mm -hmm. it, it was all over. You knew, hey, this is important what we do here. We are not, you know, an NBC affiliate, ABC, CBS. Um, but we are here giving just the common person the voice. The, the, the voice, the ability, the right to come on and say what's on their mind. Media is powerful. Television media is off the chart. And most people are not aware that commercial television is supported by advertising revenues. I don't think they understand the business of television, I'll put it like that. And that if you say the wrong thing, your revenue source might be at risk because you are, you're in business to promote brands and, and advertising. And this venue, in my opinion, is the purest venue for putting forth a community voice. Would you, would you I, I absolutely on that? I would absolutely agree. And, and I, I will tell you that the leaders of this city, the mayor and the commissioners, the city manager, mm -hmm. they get it. They, they have always get it. They have always gotten it. They understand the importance of providing their citizens a venue for voicing their opinions. So, you know, that's why they have always supported us financially. That's why we, you know, that's how we're able to do what we do financially. Now, do you do any of their uh, council meetings or anything like that? We no. tape uh, each week the Dayton City Commission meetings, and we air it four times a week on okay. our channel. So we tape every Wednesday, um, and then we also tape the Montgomery County Commission meetings um, every Tuesday, and then we show those three or four times throughout the week. And we have support from the county and, and with the city, too. Mm -hmm. so. But only, yeah, financial support comes right. from the city. The city does provide And like it. I said, if it were, were not for the city leaders, this organization, one of the top access centers in the country, would cease to exist. There's a movement throughout the country because of the financial shape mm -hmm. that cities are in. And, and actually, it, it's been worse in the past um, where they have ceased funding operations like this. But our mm -hmm. commission and our mayor and our manager they understand the importance of what we do. As a matter of fact, they participate. Oh my goodness, now in what way? Well, every one of the, the commissioners, I, I believe at one time or another, have been on the Rob Dennis show. They've all, okay. they've all done programming at one time or another in this, uh, this building. Mm -hmm. So they, they participate. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, you know, with that, you know, we have taken, we have seen our fair share of cuts mm -hmm. the last five years because there's legislation that was passed that took away the ability of the cities to negotiate funding on our parts from the cable companies, those types of things. Oh, okay. And, you know, the city of Dayton, you know, is, is not a, um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Um, they've taken their financial hits as well, like everybody else. Of course, of course. And we have lost some funding, but let me tell you, they have stepped up and said, we see what you guys are doing over there as a very valuable and vital tool to this community. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue to fund you as much as we possibly can. I think that is such a statement. I think it's powerful. I, I mean, mean we've taken cuts, the, but, you yes, know. but, but, but they're, they're there. We have, we, you know, we, we have an access center. Right, right. And we're very proud of it. 
You and they're be. very proud. The, commu you the commissioners be. are very proud of it, too. You should be. So I just, mm -hmm. I throw that out there because we have to thank them. Yes. And we have to thank the, the work of our board who puts DA TV out there and mm -hmm. promotes us as much as they can and works behind the scenes to, to make sure that we're a strong um, entity in this community. Let me ask you a question because your impact is national at this point because of technology, live streaming, PEG media, and a number of venues where programming that takes place here and shows take that take place here are now av uh, available to view in other communities. Communities, in fact, that may have this similar type of venue. Mm -hmm. Have you considered uh, providing any kind of training and um, assistance to other communities that would want to do this type of um, telecasting? Well, anyone uh, can come into our studio and go through our training and our workshops. Okay. Um, a lot of major cities have uh, PEG access, public education or government mm -hmm. access. And, um, and unfortunately, like Steve was saying, some of the cities are not supporting mm -hmm. uh, some of these access channels. And we have seen some close down you know, nationally. But anyone throughout the community, throughout Ohio, throughout the world, you know, the country can come in and take our workshops and... Oh, um, they can? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, you need to be, you know, in the city of Dayton resident, um, and you can't come out, take our cameras and go out to California right, and shoot exactly. a program. Right, right, okay. You know, it needs to stay within, you know, our So the area. criteria but still is they have to be a resident. If, say, a person, uh, we have an access company in Nevada, mm -hmm. say Las Vegas, by illustration, then is it possible for, for you to provide some kind of Consulting services, oh, of course. Oh, that yeah. type of if, thing. If they, okay. add, you know, okay. absolutely. I mean, if they ask for our help, we, and that's the other thing, the, the group that we belong to, which mm -hmm. is the Alliance for Community Media, it's a very close knit group. Mm -hmm. It's an, our, our mother organization. Okay. And so, yes, we, like all the other access centers, um, we're here to help each other. How many are there in the United States, would you mm -hmm. estimate? You know what? I used to have that number, but I'll t uh, it, it's hard for me to say now because they have closed many. Many down. of them. Yeah. But what's interesting about what Melissa was getting to getting okay. at? Okay. Um, you can actually live in Yellow Springs or Columbus and come here and take our cameras out. Mm. You know that takes special. You know, it, mm -hmm, sure, special but permission. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is is that we're in Dayton, and the show that Melissa just produced on Saturday, yes. mm -hmm. those folks drive all the way from Fort Wayne, Indiana, on a regular basis mm -hmm. to do They their. drive from Fort Wayne, which I used now, to live in. That's a good drive for, mm -hmm. to here. Now, it's not, necessarily the, it's not necessarily the people behind the scenes using the equipment, mm -hmm. but it's the people producing the content. Mm -hmm. they, they like their access center, but mm -hmm. they also have very close contacts here, and so they drive all the way here, utilize the talents mm -hmm. from those people, and your fabulous equipment, mm -hmm. really. The, fa the fabulous members. The fabulous members the as members. well. The members. You know, members. we put, the, we put the, the, the technology out there, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you right now, it's 195% of our members that make this organization. That is so good. Mm -hmm. They make that the organization. So We're I just hear here your passion. To, yeah, that is so good. We can't do anything without that. Right, no. right. When you, see us, when you see us at a festival, and mm -hmm. it is 95, and I'm telling you, it'll be 95 degrees with humidity at 100% mm -hmm. and all that. You'll see people who you basically have to kick off of a camera. Hey, you know, go take a break. They don't want to leave. They, they want to stay and help you tear all the equipment down yes, after the event. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell you, I put, the, I put all of our members on the highest pedestal. I really do. Because what they provide for their community is amazing. But I'm glad, I am glad to hear your passion because I do believe that because of that, you attract very high caliber people. Because there has to be an agreement here. I mean, the people that are not passionate are not going to be interested in staying here on any kind of basis. I don't believe because the headship, the leadership is passionate. Mm -hmm. And you come out of uh, Ms. Cole's mindset. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you carry that legacy in your day-to-day -day operations. That's what we tell our, our new members coming in. Some folks will come in and stay for years and, and do, you know, their volunteering or produce their show. Mm -hmm. And then some will come in and get the training and, and say, well, maybe it's not for them. But we, we, once you're in, you can't get out. You're, you're stuck. <laughs> I feel like you're I'm stuck, stuck yeah. but I'm a happy stuck. Mm -hmm. 
I really am. Yeah. I'm a happy stock. I'm, I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been a wonderful uh, a journey here. It has been, and your your volunteers are are exceptional. Yeah. And it's they it's simply just, are. It's amazing to be involved in this organization and. Um, you know, to uh, reiterate our orientation that we have the second mm -hmm. Wednesday of every second month. Second Wednesday of every month, it is free. It's free. They can uh, go to your um, website. Mm -hmm. And go to DATV.org. Dot um, org. They can read up on more information. Uh, they can also. Call uh, us. Then they can call us at. And two, what is the number? 223-5311. Area code 937. 937. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, to register as well. Mm hmm uh, and they could come in, stop in to obtain information. We have brochures available for members that comes in, or we can mail that out. Um, and for folks that don't have the internet, can't go on, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can uh, call us. We'll send out a, uh, a brochure to them. And then they come in to the orientation, find out when all the workshops are, and then. Now, and what can children be a part of this, or mm -hmm. is this strictly uh, 18 and over? No, it's mm -hmm. not. Um, kids can start out as young as 10. A 10-year-old can actually be trained? Now, what we, okay. what we want to do is, mm -hmm. is um, four, 13 and under, 13 to 10, uh -huh. we'll teach you how to use the studio equipment. Okay. 14 and over, we will teach you, you can, you can do all of that plus field production. Field production oh, is how to operate the camera, the, the, the camcorder out in the field, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. We just think that maybe starting at 14, and it's, it's a guessing game. Mm -hmm. That they have a little more dexterity and they mm -hmm, they're a little mm -hmm, they can handle a camera mm -hmm. a little better. Are those cameras very heavy? Those no, you know <laughs> what's funny is, and this is a change in technology, oh. and that's probably what we're going to talk about. Real okay. Quick. Thirty-five years ago, um, they were shooting on, I believe, reel to reel here. Mm -hmm. A camera hooked up to a reel to reel, and then it went from a big camera on the shoulder to a three-quarter inch mm -hmm. deck, which is a, a no, pretty I sizable yes, deck yes. recording device. Mm -hmm. And then we went to uh, VHS, which I had a camera up here mm -hmm. and a, a, a dockable recorder, to camcorders. And now the cameras are about like this big. They're camcorders. And how, mm -hmm. how much weight? How weighty? Five pounds with a battery. And that's um, it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty quality, light. Uh, what's the quality? I, oh. I would put it up against a lot. As a matter of fact, some of the local broadcasters use the camera that's one step above ours, and the only reason it's really one step is is because it uses a different type of media to record to. Okay. So we offer very good technology and equipment, and like I said, kids from 10 to 18 are free. Mm -hmm. Over 19 and over, it's 50 bucks a year. Um, yeah. So yeah. and. I want to talk about our Circle of Spirit, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, go point. on, go on. Our other level membership for our spiritual channel is the Circle of Spirit uh, membership. And for $250, a church will um, have two members come in and, be and become the member, go through the workshops. But we're also design a page um, about the church. We'll okay. have a picture of the pastor, a picture of the church. Uh, location, phone number, hours of their services, and then if they have a weekly uh, time slot on mm -hmm. our channel, we will put what time you know you can see their their program on our channel, and that will go on our website and on our um, our website and our channel 992. Okay. So it will give a little advertising as we we don't do any advertising, mm -hmm. but we're promotion. But that's we're a non-profit. Yeah, yeah, we're promoting uh, no. the church, so if, um, our community, our viewers can find out. Oh, this is where the church is located at, and you know they can they can go. Um, and we have over 40 of our Circle of Spirit members, and that also is a way to you know help fund us um, right. at the 250 level. Right. Um, but you do not need to be a Circle of Spirit member to have your church program on. You can come in and pay fifty dollars mm -hmm. um, a year, and still have you know your church on. And we have so many people that watches um, the spiritual channel from home. Mm -hmm. Those shut-ins, those that mm -hmm. are nursing elderly, homes, nursing yeah. homes mm -hmm. that cannot you know go to their church, uh, they can watch our channel. That is. But we also, okay. in addition, we also have a nonprofit and organizational membership, which is basically the same price. It's two hundred and fifty dollars. And it's a way for nonprofits to promote okay. themselves mm -hmm. on the channel. So like Melissa said, it's pretty much like the Circle of Spirit, that you'll get your own specially designed page that runs on our community bulletin board. And the community bulletin board airs after every show for the pretty, pretty much uh, mm -hmm. throughout the day. 
Really? And that's on the that's on channel five, mm -hmm. and you'll get a link on our website and a mention. Is this on strictly our for nonprofits or is this for for profits? Nonprofits. Just nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is yes. there a venue for for profits? Well, we we do. We are you know we we've had this for a while, but you know because of staffing issues, mm -hmm. um, it's been kind of tough. But we're going to start trying to ramp this up, where we give businesses the opportunity to become underwriters for okay. certain programs, underwriters for of the day, of the month. Mm -hmm. And what that will entail is it'll be an animation with um, audio okay. that runs before a show and after a show that says mm -hmm. this show was made, was brought Possible to you by, you by know. whoever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's once again, it's another way for us to generate revenue, but it's also a way to quote unquote promote um, local mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're hoping to. I can to see that doing well. I, I would hope so. I could, I would think so. I would think mm -hmm. that because interestingly enough, when you look at PBS, and I'm a fan and member. I am too. Um, they're they're underwritten written by for profits. Right. I mean, if you look at their underwriters, you'll see insurance companies, banks, uh, mm -hmm. manufacturers. They do a very good job doing that. Too. Yeah. They. I mean, it's very subtle, but it's right there. It's right. Their name is right there. And for whatever it's worth, it does leave you with a very nice impression that oh, that's very nice that they would do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that has very real promise mm -hmm. um, for you all to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. You know, the one thing, if I could kind of uh, yeah, you can go back in. a little uh -huh. bit. Um, we were talking about the video classes where yes. you can take field or you can take mm -hmm. the studio classes. We also offer other classes. Our marketing director, Dan Cefaletto, just finished a week or two ago a class on Twitter. Um, we also really? We offer social media classes on Facebook, Twitter, Blip TV, um, blogger, and, mm -hmm. and I think Dale Grow, our volunteer coordinator, uh -huh. teaches some of those as well. Um, so there's a, a whole variety of social media workshops that we, because you know, like I said earlier, we look at those as tools in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything that allows you to get your message out to the masses. Right. Well, those are clearly established venues. Twitter Absolutely. and Pinterest is another emerging yes. one um, where you basically putting pictures together. I think there's one called Instagram. Right. These are all just emerging uh, communication mm -hmm. venues or platforms. Right. But still, I think you have to look at the media. The television is, is such a powerful, it's a powerful play. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to go away. I really don't. It may have different forms. Right. But again, that ability to sit down with a clicker and to look at a mm -hmm. show is is very, very, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not going anywhere. So where do you see uh, DATV heading? Well, uh, that's interesting because we, um, we're we actually coming up with a development slash and, the, and then a technology committee to try to talk about some of those things and try mm -hmm. to meet them halfway. Technology has become very available to everyone. Yes. Never used to be. Yes. You I'm, know, when I'm I was in, started in television a hundred years yeah, ago. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you know, wow, you work at a TV station? Yep, yep. Well, now every every laptop you buy comes with a camera on mm -hmm. it and it comes with editing software, and so it's much more available. Okay. Um, I'll talk about that briefly, that it has, we have a lot of people who use their own equipment, mm -hmm. but it has not uh, diminish the need for DATV. We have 25 mm -hmm. portable cameras and every weekend those things are gone. They're out. My people are, goodness. We turn people away. So we actually bought, f we had 20, we had to buy five more mm -hmm. because we were turning people away and now those cameras are being used. My goodness. By your members. By the by members. By the okay, community by members. Okay, by the community members. My yes. goodness. Um, I don't know where DATV is going to head, honestly. I mean, I think that more and more when you talk about the internet, mm -hmm. I think that'll become more prevalent. I mean, mm -hmm. there's always going to be a need for television equipment. Yes. You know, whether, you know, the, the form of transportation is on cable or whether it's on dish or whether it's on the internet, mm -hmm. you still have to mm -hmm. have the technology to, to, to produce it and to get it there. And to interface, wouldn't you say? Because oh, if you produce on an inferior uh, medium, then the the show's going to look bad. Right. 
And that's why, we, you know, we, we spent a little money the past year or so upgrading all of our technology. Mm -hmm. um, we have a brand new control room with all digital equipment. Mm -hmm. um, all of the computers are relatively new and they're editing on um, nonlinear, which is computer-based editing systems. Mm -hmm. The, car, the cameras that they record with shoot on little SD cards, so it's very um, affordable for the member to buy a card. They can keep mm -hmm. that card, they record on it, pull it out, plug it into their computer, and they can start editing right away. That is so, and it's so affordable. It is. Those little cards, I was so shocked. At a, I think an eight gig was like less than $10. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you serious? And it'll just come down. It'll keep coming down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As more and more people. Yeah. Yes. Make that change. So, but, you know, we look forward to uh, the future. We look forward to technological changes. We always stay on top of those things. Mm -hmm. um, mode of transportation, you know, how does it get from our building to whatever site, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, internet or, or cable or whatever, you know, so we're, we're trying to stay on top of those things and, and we embrace that technology. Mm -hmm. So where do you see your challenges? Challenges? Um, As you move forward. I would say... If I could jump well, in there, yeah. Jump in there. The, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, where, where is going to be the, mo the, the popular platform for mm -hmm. presenting your program, you know, and how do we get to it? Right. If it's on the internet, we're there. Yeah, you are there. But you know what? Yeah. It's like, you know, who would have thought tape would have went away and DVDs are on their way out and yeah. all those things. You know, what are what partnerships are we going to be able to enter into with the cable companies? You know, mm -hmm. HD is going to be is is a is an issue for us now. We have the ability. All of our equipment has the ability for HD. Yes. We just have to be able to uh, partner with the cable company, Time Warner and AT and T, mm -hmm. and get them to accept our signal in HD. And that's it. I would, I would say that's going to get us to the next level. Mm. So what you're watching now is standard definition. Right. High definition is going to be much, a much better quality. And literally, the cameras you're watching this program produced on, all we have to do is in our switcher, in our control room, is hit a button. And, and you're now on HD. You're on HD. My goodness. Interesting. That is, that, is, that is very interesting. And, you know, and I would say from a programming standpoint, uh -huh. One of our biggest issues is how do we continue to meet the need of the community? Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of people producing shows. Yeah. But it, it's a great problem to have. It, it is. is a great mm -hmm. problem to and have. Our spiritual channel, we, ha we hold a lottery um, uh -huh. every year, every June, um, to determine new time slots for a year. Um, a lot of our members have been here for 20 or more years mm -hmm. and have their church program on our channel. And they want to keep the same Sunday afternoon right. Consistency uh, time. And, and as yeah. we started bringing in more churches, um, we had to figure out, okay, we need to be fair and equal to people that's been here 20, 30 years, people that's been here 15, 5, or a week. And so we came up with the lottery. It's, you know, half the people like it, half of the people don't. I can imagine. It's not perfect. It's, it's not, not perfect, it's not going but to be. It's, it's not going to it's be. fair mm -hmm. um, for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we do that every June, and um, we have, uh, right now, I mean, like I said, 75 weekly church services. Um, and every June, I have probably three or four new churches that's coming in. And that want to do this. That want yeah. to do that. And then they get the time slot. And if they don't get a time slot, you know, a lot, some of our members will be willing to change around. Mm -hmm. But then I, t I tell them that it doesn't matter what time you're on, you're going to get your message out. May, whether it be 2 a.m. or 5 p.m., mm -hmm. someone's going to be watching. Because they're twice, they're twice they're a week, twice aren't a week. they? Mm -hmm. Right, somebody yeah. is. We, we could stand a second channel for our, for for our date and spiritual television. Mm -hmm. That's we, we kind of a another, demand. We could yes. use another channel. Our, our, our religious producers are just unbelievably dedicated. Mm -hmm. We have they people are. who can barely walk, and this is important, this is very powerful. We have people who can barely walk that come into this, this building and pick up equipment and literally drag it to their car, put it and go home and produce programming of a spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's serious. Mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely How difficult would it be to get a third station channel? Uh, we're, we channel, we've yeah. been allocated, you know, we've been fortunate. We've been allocated mm -hmm. all of our channels. We have two. Okay. Two channels. Okay. So And we will work with what we we have mm -hmm. and our members um, you know, we'll understand 
you know, if we have to make any kind of changes and in, in, in the programming lineup. Um, but right now we're we're good. And to uh, to tell people again how to get involved with us is to call 937-223-5311. Well, she's good at that, isn't she? She is, she, and I, but I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it slower. Mm -hmm. And do the because, website because, again. Yeah, and do the website. Mm -hmm. So it's 937 223 mm -hmm. Two two three five three five three one 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 one, and that is to uh, become a member, mm -hmm. which is fifty dollars. Oh, if you're over eighteen. If you're over eighteen, mm -hmm. and free. And free if you're from mm -hmm. ten to eighteen. Correct? Yes, and mm -hmm. the youth groups out there become mm -hmm. members. Bring those kids in because they are so creative. I would They're definitely free. think young mm -hmm. people would take this venue and just. Uh, they know how to use all this uh, stuff. They do they anyway. Come in there. I'm like, oh, They're you're just too for smart, it. and I feel mm -hmm. so dumb. That is so amazing. Yeah. And also, I'd like to emphasize to my viewers in the remaining time we have, this has been so delightful and so informative, and I appreciate their giving of their time because they're actually taking time to do this. I ask them to, but they're busy people. But I want to encourage all of you to support DATV, which is Channel 5 in Dayton. It live streams through their website, datv.org. And you'll see on the little uh, uh, icons where it, it, it'll let you look at live streaming. Also let you see my program. My program airs on DATV uh, in Dayton and surrounding areas at uh, 9 in the morning on Mondays mm -hmm. and 5 in the afternoon on Friday. Those are wonderful times to have information about what I talk about around money. And of course, this is a informative show. There's no profit to me. There's no profit to them. We're fully volunteer. And I make this drive because this is just such an extraordinary place. I'm just delighted to be a part of it. But if you'd like to become a member and, and take advantage, or if you know people that would, I'm going to encourage you to go on and join because it's very, very, very well spent money the opportunity to learn about this venue and to become an expert at doing this type of work. For many of you seniors who would like to be able to do something like this, you've been curious, Good point. now let's make a move. I'm a senior now and I know, I, I know you don't believe it, but I <laughs> am. And uh, this is, it's, it's just wonderful. You cannot go to a major commercial television station and get any of this. You're not going to, if you don't have credentials, if you're not hired in, they're not going to let you practice on their equipment. They're a money-making venue, and you will not have that access. So I'm going to encourage seniors. I'm going to encourage church organizations, uh, business networking organizations. Become a part of this. It's a tremendous way to get your message out, to learn how to do some things, and to be a part of this remarkable family. So I want to say these uh, as a part of my closing remarks today. It has been a, a great show uh, to have an opportunity to talk to Steve and Melissa, who are two very, very uh, loving and wonderful people. I wouldn't be here otherwise. I'm so serious. I wouldn't. So I want to close out today's show again by saying thank all of you for listening in. Uh, I hope you've learned some things about DATV in Dayton, Ohio, mm -hmm. celebrating 35 years in the public television venue under a belief espoused by their founder, Roxy, that the community has the right to speak. And mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say we all believe that passionately. So on today's show, I sign off again as Michelle Graves, and I so appreciate you listening in and being a part of my world for the last hour. And as always, you take care of yourself and God bless.